Every afternoon, Thomas the Tank Engine puffs along his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. First, they pass the water mill. Next, they come to a big farm. Then, they can see a bridge with a village nestled either side of it. This is a special place. Whenever children hear Thomas coming along, they stand on the bridge waving until he is out of sight. One day, Thomas was running late. He had stopped at the signal before the bridge to talk to some new children. Percy the green engine was waiting too. Hurry up, Thomas, called Percy when the signal dropped. If you're late, Sir Topham Hatt may get a new engine to replace you. He would never do that, thought Thomas, but he was worried. Next day, Thomas hurried along the line. Just ahead was the goods yard. There, on the platform, was an inspector waving a red flag. Next, Thomas saw some children. They were waving, too. Something must be wrong, thought Thomas. This station is for goods, not passengers. Help, Thomas, help! We're glad to see you, called the children. Please, will you take us home? The station master explained to Thomas's driver that the school bus had broken down and all the parents would be worried if the children were late. Thomas waited as the children walked down from the bridge. Then he took the children to the next station where Bertie was waiting to take them home. When Thomas finished his journey, he was very late. He was worried that Sir Topham Hatt might be cross with him. I warned Thomas, puffed Percy to James. He's been late one time too many. He'll be in trouble now. But next morning, when Thomas picked up his passengers, Sir Topham Hatt was nowhere to be seen. Thank goodness, sighed Thomas. Thomas knows every part of his branch line. Just ahead was a stretch where the hot sun had bent the rails on the track. Careful, Thomas, called his driver, but it was too late. That's done it, said his driver. We shan't get any further today. But what about my passengers, asked Thomas. Don't worry, they'll be looked after, replied his driver. While workmen repaired the line, Thomas had to shunt freight cars in the yard. Bertie came to see him. I understand you need my help again. Yes, Bertie, replied Thomas sadly. I can't run without my rails. Bertie set off to collect Thomas's passengers. Bertie, they said. We're glad you're here. Bertie drove along the road that runs by the railway. He stopped at each station along the line. Sometimes he stopped between stations to let people off closer to their homes. Thomas felt miserable. I've lost my passengers to Bertie. They'll like him better than me. Sir Topham had arrived. Your branch line is repaired. I'm going to change your timetable so that you and Bertie can work together more. When Thomas reached the station, there to his relief were all his passengers. Bertie is a good bus, but we missed our train rides with you, they said. Later, Thomas spoke to Bertie. Thank you for looking after my passengers. That's all right, Thomas. I like to make new friends, but I'm glad to share them with you. You're a good friend indeed, replied Thomas, and always will be. Coach. Ignore him, Thomas. He's teasing again. But I'm not a slow coach. 
I can be faster than him, and I'll show him I will. Oh, oh, twist. Twist. <laughs> Okay? Uh, no. I feel like there's something wrong with my engine. Oh, I blew a gasket. And I have passengers to take where they want to go. Maybe I can help. Some of your stops are close to the stations on my branch line. And I'll get help somewhere along the way. Oh, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> <sighs> it's good to have a friend like Thomas.